All right, good people, based on what we've seen from Intel's Alder Lake so far, there's been a ton of excitement about what it can bring to laptops. I mean, if you look at the desktop side, Alder Lake's combination of high performance and ultra efficient cores led to a pretty unique design that ended up beating some of the best AMD's got right now. It wasn't perfect though, since you know, there were some problems, especially on Windows 10. And shoehorning Alder Lake into laptops, well, I mean, the results you're gonna see in this video are really, really interesting, that's for sure. Uh, on one hand, there's some mind-blowing stuff here when you see how far Intel's jumped from just a single generation, but I've also got some big, and I mean some really big concerns too. Anyways, before that happens, let's take a quick look at what Intel's offering here for their higher end H series. Now, unlike the desktop CPUs, there's more efficient cores than performance cores right across their entire lineup. And that's a critical move for laptops. Now, I do wanna mention right away that if you wanna save some money on your next laptop purchase, right at the top, the 12900H and HK are basically the same processor, except the HK technically allows for overclocking. The same can pretty much be said for the 12800H versus the 12700H and 12600H against the 12500H, because each pair has the exact same number of cores, with the only difference being a minor clock speed gap. And technically, if a manufacturer pumps those lower end CPUs with a little bit more power, they could actually end up beating some of the more expensive ones. Now, this is just scratching the surface of Intel's Auto Lake laptop CPUs and their architecture. But if you guys are probably here for one thing, it's pretty much performance. So if you wanna hear a lot more about the architecture, uh, the P and the U series, and a bunch of other stuff. I've actually done a bigger overview uh, that covers through all that. So if you want to check that out, link will be right over here. Now the subject of this video is gonna be the 2022 version of MSI's high-end GE76 Raider. And this one's a bit of a beast because it's got the i9 12900HK, 32 gigabytes of DDR5, 4800 megahertz memory, a 17 inch 300 hertz 1080p display, two one terabyte SSDs, and NVIDIA's new high-end RTX 3080 Ti with 16 gigabytes of video memory. Now this thing's also a chunker as well because it's almost an inch thick and it weighs over five and a half pounds. So yeah, I mean, it's nothing as sleek as Legion series or even a lot of the modern ones that Asus has with their laptops. Uh, it almost feels like it's a laptop that's, you know, a few generations behind, uh, except for the fact that it has that large RGB strip, but I mean, it's 2022 it's gotta have some sort of RGB, right? Now you might be wondering what this thing would go for. Now I don't have the official price yet, but I hope you're sitting down for this one because the 2021 version with an RTX 3080, a 240 hertz display and an i9-11980HK CPU, I was going for around 3,400 US dollars. The 2022 version, um, we're in the street is that it's gonna go for between $3,500 and $4,000, which is, that's a lot of money, folks. Now, there's something else that I also want to mention about the GE76, because first of all, Intel actually sent an almost identical model to us back in 2021 uh, with an i9-11980HK and an RTX 3080 with 16 gigabytes of VRAM. On the positive side, that actually allows us for more of an apples to apples comparison, uh, because you know if you look at the CPU side, at least you, know, you have the exact same chassis with just two different generations of CPUs, so that's good. Now, about that older GE76, Actually, after testing a lot of laptops last year, it actually ended up turning out to be a weird one because a lot of other Intel-based high-end gaming laptops ended up being faster than that one, um, even if they sported lower-end CPUs like the i9-11900H. Because MSI's internal power plants and thermal management still has a long way to go. And I'm not making any excuses here. I'm just setting up the stage for something that might happen again this year. And speaking of how this thing handles power and temperatures, let's talk about that right after a quick message from today's video sponsor. How would you define evolution? Perhaps constant improvement based on earlier iterations, developing a better product for the future, going from big to small, or simply building something so feature-packed I have no time to cover everything. I mean, come on, Lian Lee, this new case is incredible, and finally a proper tagline that absolutely fits. Evolution continues. Whew. The new O11 Dynamic Evo by Lian Lee. You gotta check it out below. All right, I know this might not need repeating for our regular viewers, but I thought I might as well just bring this up again. While the desktop market gets pretty much constant performance from one device to another, that doesn't happen in the laptop space. 
because here, the amount of power and the quantity of heat a component produces becomes a critical factor. Uh, for example, if you have two identical processors and if one of them gets more power headroom, it will outperform the other one. So that's why this section is super important. So the MSI GE76 has four power modes, but I will be covering balanced and extreme performance here. Um, extreme performance is just too loud for anyone with <laughs> you know, an ounce of sanity. Uh, so the benchmarks that we'll be showing will be run uh, in balance mode. So here you can see that both modes end up sticking to power limits that are way higher than 45 watt value in Intel spec sheets. Extreme hits between 80 watts and 75 watts, while balance bounces between 67 and just above 70 watts. Now, this isn't anything out of the ordinary, since most gaming laptops are able to flex their cooling muscles for more power overhead. So just take note of that as I go on here. And speaking of temperatures, uh, it's actually pretty obvious MSI is running the 12900HK right at the edge, especially the extreme performance modes. Even balance gets into the act in the first few seconds, and then it sort of levels at around 90 degrees. Now, I know a lot of you are looking at this and thinking it's way too hot, but on laptop CPUs, this is pretty much par for the course. And remember, all the lakes maximum temperature before throttling is 100 degrees, and we're short of that here. But there is an impact on clock speeds, which is pretty obvious in both performance modes, but check out balance mode. Based on these frequencies, in shorter tests under two minutes, it might end up underperforming because there's a frequency drop off between 20 and 150 seconds. Now, after that point, it comes back strong. I'm actually pointing the finger at MSI here since their cooling system ends up playing catch up rather than increasing fan speeds before the chip hits 95 degrees. Extreme performance is interesting too, since the 10 watts of additional power and ultra loud fan speeds only gets you around 200 megahertz at best, which is not a lot. Now that I've said that out as a baseline, I guess it's time to talk about the laptops and the respective power settings that you'll be seeing in this video. Now feel free to pause here if you need to take all of this in, but all in all, this video includes the fastest 15 inch and 17 inch laptops that has passed over my desk in 2021. They've all got their CPUs and GPUs pushed close to the max. So this should give you a good idea about how the new GE76 Raider stacks up to the absolute best that last year had to offer. And keep those power numbers in mind too, since this is about to get wild because even when operating at less wattage than many of the other laptops, the 12900HK just destroys everything. Also, keep an eye on the older GE76 since it's running at the exact same 75 watts as the newer one, so it's a perfect representation of how much improvement there's been in one generation. And the new version is in a whole different performance dimension in most of these. It actually feels like a whole new thing rather than the same boring incremental performance updates from years past. It also dominates everything AMD has right now in terms of raw numbers and performance per watt. It's been a long time since anyone could have said that about Intel laptop CPUs. And remember, this is against Tiger Lake, which was already pretty competitive against the best AMD had to offer. Am I excited? Heck yeah, because this means AMD's got to answer with something and that leads to more competition and better choices for everyone. The only place the 12900HK doesn't smash everything else is in GPU accelerated video rendering. Here, it's at the GPU's mercy and an actual application bottleneck in Resolve. In Premiere, there's a good jump in performance though, especially against the AMD laptops that don't benefit from QuickSync or OpenCL acceleration when the discrete GPUs enabled. Now, moving on to the gaming results, it's important to remember that the 3080 Ti is the highest end GPU here, by a long shot too. It's also got a newer version of Nvidia's Advanced Optimus, so that'll positively impact the results here. So it's a bit hard to determine whether or not these dominating frame rates are due to the GPU, the processor, or a combination of both. The only way we'll be able to know that for certain is after testing a bunch of other laptops with the RTX 3080 Ti. But based on what we've seen on the desktop side, and especially when you consider some of these games like CSGO, Rainbow Six and Valorant are heavily CPU limited at 1080p, I have a feeling we'll see the 12900 series turning into one of the best laptop processors for gaming, period. Now, at the beginning of this video, I mentioned that I had some serious concerns about all the Lake laptops, and I wasn't kidding. Because back when they talked about them during CES, there was one thing that jumped out to me. Because at no one point during the presentation did they mention about battery life. Like, 
nothing at all. Not even for the ultra efficient U series processors. And on laptops, that's actually a pretty big red flag. And guess what? Where there's smoke, there's usually fire. Because even with the biggest battery here, the G76 gets some absolute pathetic numbers. These are actually some of the worst that I've seen in the last year. And yeah, I know this one's got a 17 inch 300 hertz display, but if you look at the S17, the Legion 7i and the older Raider, they almost have the same setup. So it's definitely not that. Now I can't say for sure if there's some sort of BS going behind the scenes since this is the only Windows 11 laptop that we have over here. Uh, and MSI has been known to push some background processes than necessary, but it's still super concerning. The only way to know if this is a trend is to test more devices. And don't worry, those reviews are coming up. It's just that right now, based on this result, Intel might have a problem. One that makes Auto Lake great for performance, but terrible for the one place that it counts for laptops, and that is mobility. Well, that pretty much wraps us up, guys. And I've got to say, for the first time in a few years, I'm actually pretty stoked about these new 12th gen Auto Lake CPUs, because the 12900HK that's in here is not even pushed to the max, and yet it still manages to you know, slap the other CPUs that are uh, on the charts. I can't wait to see what happens when other companies like Legion really allow Alder Lake to stretch its legs. But I'm probably more excited about how AMD reacts to this. Also, there's that whole factor about battery life as well, which is super concerning, but I guess we'll just have to sort of wait and see when we start testing more of these laptops. So on that note, thank you so much for watching. Uh, let us know what you guys think about these new 12th gen CPUs from Intel. Are you excited about them? Uh, is there any specific comparison that you'd like us to test out? Chime in, in the comments down below. I'm Ibra with Hardware Connects. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.